Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the top-of-the-line GT racing wheel and button plate from the guys at Cube Controls, the Sparco Pro GT wheel. Based on the two wheels I have reviewed so far from Cube Controls, I'm expecting a wheel package that has been professionally done with top flight components, fit, and finish. Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. So now let's take a closer look at this Cube Controls wheel. This is the Sparco GT Pro, as we said in the intro, and it's based around, or actually connecting to, or attached to, if you will, this P310 Sparco wheel. Now, I haven't had a Sparco wheel in the SRG for, I can't remember when I, last time I had one, actually. And this actually has a double D configuration on it, which at first I was a little concerned about using it for rally. And, when, you know, when you're drifting around corners and things, and the wheel spinning around a little bit in your hands. Yeah, no problem here. Just keep your hands a little bit loose, and it slides right through just like a, a rounded one would. So no issues there. 310 millimeters across, so that's... Actually, on their site, it says 320 millimeters, but it definitely is 310, which I like. You know, 300 is a sweet spot for me and for all-around wheel, I think, like the R1 from Turn Racing. But when I got this, these grips are obviously a little thinner than what I, what I like on the R1, and I was a little concerned about that. But I tell you what, when I was actually driving with this wheel, it felt pretty good. I, I'm actually kind of, uh, I like it. And I think the reason is, even though it's not a real fat grip here, or it's not as fat as, as the ones that I like, on the bottom of this, or on the back here where your fingers are gripping this wheel, I'm not sure how well this is showing up, but there's a kind of a sharp drop off here. It's good and rounded, so it's not, it doesn't feel sharp, but you can see it's, it just drops off. It's, it doesn't fill in and, and do a gradual slope here. It really drops off sharply. And that kind of lets you just rest your fingers right on the, right on that back part around where that drop off is. And it just feels more secure than wheels that don't, that have a shallower piece in there. Anyway, just something that I noticed when I was using the wheel. Of course, this wheel comes with two red buttons. If you look on their website and, a, and Q controls has put a screw in there and a, I can't really see it, but there's actually a nut on the back of that screw. And it dresses it up rather nicely, I think. Instead, of, or they could have actually used the switches, I suppose, and done something with that. But this is how they went with it, so that's what we got. I think it looks good the way with these screws in it, if you're not going to use the switches. Right. Carbon fiber, obviously, all around this, like typically what we see on the Q-Control wheels. This one actually comes with a front plate. And it is engraved with the Cube logo here. Actually CNC'd into it. I don't know how well that's going to show up. But it's actually CNC'd in here and colored in. So very nicely done here. And we have two momentary switches that are coming through this plate. And, and when we do the look inside, we'll be able to see where they drill the holes to accommodate that. Because uh, the wheel does not come with the holes already drilled for those switches. Right. Talking about switches, we've got a lot of switches here, and buttons and encoders. And all this stuff is feels very high quality. The buttons have a nice click to them. It's a pretty tactile click, actually. I don't know if you guys can hear that. So you, when you press the button, it feels like you, press, you really have pressed a button, I, even with my gloves on that I use. And I don't know how important that is to you, but yeah, it's... it's better than some of the buttons that I've had before. You press them and it feels very vague. You, you can't really, you're not even sure if you really pressed it all the way unless something happened on the car that you were driving. Right. So nice buttons. Of course, they're clear. There's no color to these buttons because obviously if you've seen this wheel before or the stuff from Cube, they, these are LED illuminated buttons on this wheel. Very nice, actually. I kind of, this when I first got the, the first wheel that had the, the lip buttons, I thought it was a little gimmicky at first until I actually had it in hand, was using it, and actually have grown to like them, actually. All right, so we have some encoders on here also with our buttons. We have some switches up here. Let me show you these switches here. These are actually just one position switches. It's either off or it's on, right? So there's only one move on this switch in the Windows game controller settings. And of course, these light up, but we'll see that in a minute. So you got actually a total of, let's see, I think it's almost, I think it's like 28 because we have two shifters. We've got one, two, three, four up here. 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 27 or so moves on this wheel, which is plenty, I think, for most any wheel. I, I think most people would agree with that. Now, speaking of the encoders, we'll do the side ones first. These little aluminum knobs here are very nicely done. I don't know how well they're showing up here, but they're easy to get to with your finger, at least my pinky when I'm using them. And they have this texture on them that is, is like a sharp edge on both edges where this between the notches in it. It's not so sharp that you would think that it would cut you or anything, but it's nice to, it's a very nice grippy wheel because of that. And I've actually, I know some encoders, they're all, you know, they're, well, they're, most of them are plastic anyway, but they don't have that tactile feel to them. Even with the glove on, a glove actually gl grabs it a little better, I think. So yeah, easy to manipulate these and they have a very nice positive click in the encoders. I've had plenty of encoders before that don't have that. And yeah, on different wheels. So I don't know if you can hear that or not, but yeah, it sounds good and it feels good. So again, this is the kind of thing I've come to expect from cube control wheels. And of course they are priced accordingly. <laughs> and we have a blue one over here, the same affair. Very nicely done, same kind of uh, sharp edges here. They are easy to grip. And then we have the front encoders, which again, I think these are all the same encoders because they sure feel the same, which is nice and a crisp notch in there. Even with gloves on, you can feel if you've gone one or two, if I've gone too far when I'm adjusting brake bias or maybe a jacker adjustment that I'm making on an Indy car or something like that. Yeah, very, very positive feel there. And the same thing over here. All of these feel pretty much the same. So yeah, hats off for these because for them using these nice encoders here because it really makes a difference to the feel and really the entire presentation of the wheel when you're using it. Right, so what else we want to talk about here? Oh yeah, this is the seven position and this is an Alps switch and it has this top on it. I might get a closer look at that when we actually are looking, doing the look inside because it's going to have to come off to get this front plate off. But yeah, it's got this like this tacky feel to it, sandpapery almost, but not quite that sharp as a sandpaper would be. And of course, it's a seven position. You can push it. We can push it uh, from over here to the left. We can push it to the right, up or down. And of course, it is also an encoder right there. And you can hear that. Again, very, it, you can feel this, the encoder here making the notches. Very solid tactile feed back from these notches, which I really enjoy. Right. And of course, these are, you get two button presses with these guys here too. I think we already went over theirs. So that's all the buttons. And this is a, a rather thick, a, a wider looking weave, but we'll look a little closer to that when we have everything apart as far as the carbon fiber. It feels good. It has the semi-gloss finish, I guess. Not quite the matte. I don't know, maybe that's matte. Hard to tell in the lights. But yeah, nice finish to it. They have the decals in here instead of some wheels I know come with some silk screen printing for what the switch is supposed to be doing. And that's great. Actually, silk printing is obviously going to be more durable, I think, than just the stickers. But with stickers, you can change things around and you really limit yourself if you're going with silk screening. And you can custom order whatever stickers or button locations you want for your stickers. But these stickers, are one thing that are a wear item on this wheel or all wheels and I'm not picking on cube here all stickers in fact the stickers I print myself and put on wheels same same issue with those they will wear and eventually you know you'll scrape an edge up and it'll start peeling off slowly and start looking bad but you can replace it and that's the good thing about stickers so yeah you can order whatever you want and of course the stickers on the button the same affair with them eventually you might pull one up or the writing might actually wear off and the writing on these buttons here are actually white, but the color actually shows through. And you'll see that when we get a closer look at the light coming off of these buttons once we have it plugged in. Right. So I guess that's all that we need to see on the front and on the back. The usual affair here with my fingerprints all over it. <laughs> the cube controls has got that silk screen printing on the top there. Very nicely done. And of course, a very nicely done machined CNC machined aluminum housing back here or cover. And yeah, it's got the chamfering on the edges here, 
just just very nicely done just like the other wheels that i've had in here from q controls at the srg just very professionally done and again i don't think we should expect anything less at the price point that these things come in at and of course we have the magnetic shifters on both sides and they do a great job as far as the tactile feedback and i have no complaints with the shifters at all they have a kind of a nice aired or aired out looking <laughs> carbon fiber uh, paddle here so that it can lose weight you don't want to put any more weight on your car obviously <laughs> but these are three mil thick carbon fiber bits and they are the same as far as the pattern on the carbon fiber there is i think it's a better shot right there as it is on the front over here this thicker weave this is actually one of the thicker weaves of carbon fiber i think i've seen and yeah really really looks nice there are some adjustments here and let me get a little close up here for you and this screw right here you can see there is a slot that we can actually change the angle of this aluminum lever here right so it's not much of an angle change but it doesn't take much really to kick this thing out because it's changing here and we're way out here with the lever by the way the levers are also nicely chamfered there on the edges there you can see that very nicely done and we have a lot of adjustment ability in these levers as you can see in and out and speaking of the lever itself it's a nice aluminum anodized unit and there's a this is carbon fiber here these pieces right here and we have another anodized piece you can see the cube control logo on it there and these are magnetic but they are switchless they're based on a hall sensor principle so yeah you should get a very long life cycle out of these shifters being sensor or rather shiftless rather so yeah really like this and the anodization here just as a, a side note this is like a gun metal gray i think it, and i'm trying to get the best look at it here i think maybe that's the best look for the color so we've got it obviously on the hub here and on the levers and the bottom parts of our shifters very nicely done it just gives that that high end finish to everything on the wheel and like i said it should considering the, the market that they're actually pricing this wheel at right speaking of the hub this is a 50.8 millimeter pattern on this hub so if you get a wheel from cube and cube does all their wheels this way so they're all 50.8 uh, as far as the bolt pattern goes which means whatever you attach it to you're going to need a 50.8 adapter I, I use the q1r the excellent q1r uh, quick releases and this is the wheel side adapter so this is actually the smaller 50.8 millimeter one so it's going to fit right up there no problem and then we'll be able to drive it so just remember be mindful of that if you order one of these you're going to need something maybe even an adapter of course they, there's a lot of adapters out there that go from 50.8 to 70 so just keep that in mind if you buy this wheel you can actually see down in there the electronics chip there that little package as they call them and yeah it looks like a blue pcb board there huh that's custom right so even more custom stuff going on in here but we'll see that once we get to the look inside anything else we want to oh yeah this is one thing i wanted to talk about you see this connector here it's at a 45 degree angle coming off the back of the housing now when i had the other gt wheel it was actually at a, at a 90 degree or just coming straight out the bottom like this guy here remember this <laughs> The F1 cube control, you can see how that one's coming straight down off the aluminum housing back here. So the same thing is here, was here rather, which limited what you could do because once you put this, let me get the cable over here, once you get the cable connected, if it's straight up and down, then the bottom of these rims on a lot of these race car rims are, is going to stick out f too far and you won't be able to use this. Now some rims don't do that. But I think most of them do. Most of them that I tried when I had that GT wheel in here. Get this thing straightened up here. When I had the GT wheel in here, yeah, most of them I tried it, it, would, it wouldn't fit because this was in the way. And I actually uh, discussed that, or didn't discuss it, I actually mentioned that to Q Controls about the wheel when I had it. And it's nice to see that they're actually doing something different now and doing the 45. Not only is it nice for us to be able to be able to, you know, take this off if I want to, this button plate, and put it on a different wheel if I want to, depending, of course, if it'll fit in this pattern here, which it will on the OMP Super Quattro and a few other wheels. They actually have them on their site. But I imagine there's others that'll fit too. But this opens up 
a lot more wheels to to be able to use with your button plate so you don't you're not stuck with just one wheel if you buy this expensive but plate button plate and wheel assembly now i'm not sure if you can get the button plate by itself but you'd have to contact cube for those that information but yeah nice that they've done that with that 45 degree angle now so now when we connect this cable and let's take a quick look at the cable i think we're done with all the rest of the stuff here this is a very nice industrial thick usb cable i mean it take a lot to eat through this cable it's very thick it's like i would say six seven millimeters thick at least and it's very and it's when they're thick they are a little stiff so i usually take them first time when i first get them and i usually grab the first little ring there and just stretch it out a little bit it's going to come right back obviously but and eventually it might even get as tight as it was when it first came out but i like to just stretch them out a little bit pre-stretch it if you'll kind of relieve that tension a little bit so when i'm actually using it on the wheel we, it just flows a little better i think with these stiffer type of usb cables stiff is good it's got great shielding in it so it shouldn't be any of my interruption or interference rather and they're using the these are very it's a this is called the SP13 series from Weipu. <laughs> anyway, to give you guys a look at it there. I kind of like the blue contrasting on this. Anyway, in fact, it really went good with the blue on this F1 wheel, right? So let's go ahead and put this on while we're talking about it. And of course, it's, it's keyed with slots here, so you have to get it in the right position before it goes in. And then it's, of course, just twist it down when you're done. Now we're all connected. Right, so there it is, all connected and ready to go, except we got to put our quick release on it, but we're also going to have to do the look inside segment. But before we do that, well, let's take a look at the lights on these wheels. Let me, let me get my laptop over here closer because this I'm not sure how much tension it's going to put on this cable once I'm actually plugging it in. And there's the lights. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go over here and turn off these lights. Should get a better look at it, I think. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. These are really easy to see lights. And you can see the way they have the buttons, that even when you turn them sideways or off-centered or you're off-angle, still very bright. Actually, I, I like that. It's pretty cool. And you can see the lights actually showing through the text that's on these buttons as far as the stickers. You can see that one says neutral. This one says pit. So yeah and of course the top ones here they flash right and there's no way to adjust the flashing or which button you want to flash maybe moving forward they might implement something like that i think they said these are on and off switches so you know when it's on or off because of they'll be lit up with the colors nice little blue colors on those so yeah, again, when I first saw, first saw the lights on the buttons, I thought it was kind of cool, but at the same time kind of gimmicky. But I tell you what, it kind of grows on you, especially when you're, you're racing around in the night. And I, usually I, I black out the, this SRG here when I'm actually running, if I'm, not, if I'm not doing any video, obviously. And yeah, it's kind of cool to have the lights when you have everything dark in here, except your triple screens and your steering wheel. It just kind of adds to the immersion, I think, anyway, for me. Maybe not for everybody. Right, so there you go. There's the flashing lights. And what we'll do next is, yeah, we'll just get to the look inside. Now let's take a look inside of this wheel assembly or button plate assembly. As you can see, if you've watched any of the reviews I've done, yeah, Cube Controls is really a professional operation as far as what we get from them, as I said before in this review. And it carries on on the insides of the wheels themselves with their custom-made PCB boards Get you a closer look at that. I mean, everything is just so well done here. Very professional. Everything is neat and tidy. Only thing is we've got these switches here that are kind of floating around in these little cutouts in the PCB, but not a big deal. They're just hardwired or direct wired to the PCB board back there. But other than that, yeah, very nice. And you can see the clear buttons where we have the LEDs on there also. So yeah, very, very nice stuff here. And the carbon plate on the top is a three mil bit. So it's three mils thick. And it has a, a, a rather large weave to it, if you look at that there. Comparably to, I was just comparing this to their F1 wheel that I have. And you can see the weave on that, how tight the weave is as far as that's concerned. 
So yeah, two different types of, in fact, you can see it even better on the back, I think. Yeah, very, very big compared to what's on the actual wheel over here. I'm not sure what difference that makes, if any, as far as the strength or anything like that. But yeah, there's something to, that's kind of stuck out to me. And again, this is the close-up of the, also a three millimeter carbon fiber panel. Again, the larger weave here for the carbon fiber. And as we saw before, the recessed etching for the Cube Controls logo. All right. Anything else we want to see? Well, now that we have the wheel bare, I thought I'd show you this, this Barco 310 wheel. And first off, you can see they've actually drilled a hole here and drilled a hole over here next to the 70 millimeter mounting pattern. And of course, that's to accommodate the switches over here on the board. So my question was, when I was looking at this was, can we just buy the plate, the button plate assembly, and the obviously the covers for it and if you want to keep the switch or not have the switches you probably have that option but you could drill your own wheel for the switches and i did actually take this wheel over here my omp wheel which is a super quadro this one here just to see if it would fit and it looks like it will so that would make me inclined to believe that you can just get these button plates yourself but yeah if I hold this up here and I line up these holes here that are in the wheel for mounting then it looks like to me that would be no issue everything clears quite well here in fact you can see some of the buttons come in on the holes there if I wiggle you might be able to see some of that but yeah it looks like it can bolt right up to this but of course if we wanted to maintain the switches here on this PCB board then we would have to drill a hole in the wheel accordingly. Not a big deal. In fact, it would, I imagine it would be pretty easy because all you have to do is take this plate and hold it up to whatever steering wheel you have and match up your 70 millimeter holes. And once you have those matched up, then of course you can just go ahead and mark the holes for your switches and then go ahead and drill them out. No big deal. So that was one thing I was wondering about and I thought I'd show you guys the solution I found to that question. Right, anything else? Took these aluminum knobs off. Had to do that to get this plate off. You can see them there. Very nice units. You have a little set screw there for taking them on and off. Got to also have the black one here. And we have this switch that was on the seven position switch. Or not switch, but cap. And this is a, I'm not sure what this is. It almost feels like it's some kind of a Maybe, a, I don't know if it's 3D printed or not. It doesn't look like it, but it's a very hard material and it's kind of grippy too. I really like the grip on this. So it's easy to get your thumb over there and manipulate the switch. And this just actually kind of was pressed on. So we'll press that back on the best we can once we put it back together. Anything else we want to see? I think that's it. Yeah, everything else we covered in the uh, closer look. Again, I do like the way they've attached this quick release or hub adapter actually not a quick release onto the back of the aluminum housing that's actually recessed down in there too it's just a little easier to look at some of this stuff when the wheel the steering wheel is not connected and again kudos for them changing the position of the usb connector to a 45 degree angle where it used to be sticking straight down which actually would complicate it attaching to more wheels but now they've avoided that by doing this so great that they've changed that Right, so really not a whole lot to see here on the inside look, but what we'll do is go ahead and put the wheel all back together, then we'll get some driving footage and, yeah, figure out what we think about this wheel. All right, so here we are driving at Sebring in iRacing. We're in the Ferrari 488 GT3, I believe, yes. And the shifters here are what I'm really trying to feel out in... You know they they are very crisp they, they just feel good as you might imagine with the if you watch the closer look and, and look inside you know the aluminum levers on them and the carbon fiber bits yeah it just all comes together as a very nice shifting package hall sensing well you really can't tell the difference whether it's a hall sensor or a switch in there i think when you have a magnetic shifter so i couldn't tell the difference anyway not that it really matters still a nice crisp shift you knew when you know when you do your shifts so yeah no problems there the Buttons all work fine. The 
as far as the encoders again as i was saying before they have a really nice tactile feel to these encoders and when you turn one and you go into a notch on a setting you know that you've actually done that even with gloves on i could i could clearly feel that i'd turned it and i you I mean, know again hats off to q controls for using these kind of encoders because they're very tight i also wanted to use the wheel in let's see we're in the lotus 79 now in a heel and toe shifting with my hand instead of the paddles and of course the wheel doesn't have much to do here when you're driving a Lotus 79 not a lot of settings that you can put on the wheel but I did use it for obviously going through my my black box stuff and yeah again all the buttons very nice tactile feel here and yeah the, the lights on the buttons didn't bother me at all I really kind of am fond of those now you know I wish again there was a way to adjust them but and maybe in future iterations they'll have something like that as far as the brightness. I also wanted to test this wheel, the rim mainly here, I guess, because we're using a, a shifter, a or rather a sequential shifter here in this car doing some rally for the sliding around feel as far as dirt tracking it, this wheel, or using it in drifting or obviously in rally. And yeah, it's, it's a wheel that does that okay. I was a little worried because it doesn't have, it has the, the flat part in the top, but yeah, no, it didn't really affect anything. It did, worked out really well. So here we are back on, let's see, we're in the ring now, back in the Ferrari GT3, and again, using the paddle shifters and any buttons or knobs that I want to use. This is really a good complete package for a wheel. It's a very expensive wheel, and I, I think you get your money's worth in this wheel with the custom rim that it comes with and you know the lights and everything is just really clearly well done here professionally done but we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the final thoughts next final thoughts on the cube controls custom sparko gt wheel package i've reviewed two other wheels from cube controls i have come to expect top flight high quality results from anything that cube controls makes while testing this wheel i'm happy to say that this trend continues and Apparently the guys at Cube Controls are also working on improving their wheels as they move forward. I like the way they have moved the aluminum housings USB connector to a 45 degree angle, allowing this button plate to work with a larger selection of wheels. The Hall sensor equipped magnetic shifters worked as expected, with a nice crisp tactile feel to them. The shifters have enough adjustability baked in to satisfy most drivers out there, I think. The encoders are all top flight units with a nice tight feel to their movements. An Alps seven way switch is also a welcome addition to this wheel package. I do wish they had another one on the other side of the wheel. <laughs> the LED buttons are nice and bright, maybe too bright for some, but I have come to like them. I wish there was a way to dim them and select which ones blinked. Maybe in future designs, this will be implemented. The anodized aluminum bits are very nicely finished and add an upper crust look to this wheel package. You will need a 50.8 millimeter bolt pattern connector or adapter to get it fixed to the wheel base of your choice. When opened up, this wheel reveals the attention to detail that you see all around the outside of the wheel. A custom PCB board that has a nice tidy look to it. Overall, I don't think there's much not to like about this wheel package, except maybe the price. <laughs> At 890 euros or just at $1,000, this is a wheel that is marketed toward the serious sim racer with some disposable income, or the real race car driver or team that wants a high-end wheel and button plate for practicing in a simulation environment. And only you can decide if this wheel could be the right one for your sim racing needs. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.